Hello, AOS fans, Robin back again uh, with another book, uh, another five reasons to read post. Um, today I'm going to talk about Sourdough by Robin Sloan. Now he doesn't write novels that often, Robin Sloan, and they're, they're very, uh, very hipstery type novels, uh, but they're very enjoyable. I've read two of his now, I don't know if he's got any more novels out. Uh, the first one I read is this one, Mr Penumbra's 24-hour bookstore. Uh, which I read a few years ago, and it's really great. I really enjoyed this. It's kind of geek manner, basically. Uh, there's codes in it, there's references to Tolkien, Google comes up in it heaps, uh, there's secret uh, societies that are centuries old, there's a bookstore with huge, huge ladders. It's just great, uh, brilliant, I loved it. Uh, and then I kind of, you know, I'm looking out for a new book, looking out for a new book, and uh, nothing really came, and then, and then suddenly I got an email about sourdough. Uh, would I like to review Sourdough? So yes, I would. Thank you very much to Atlantic Books for sending me this. This is Sourdough. So what is it? Well, it's not as obviously geeky as um, Mr Penumbra uh, and his bookstore. There, there is some geeky references, but it's a lot less overtly geeky. But it's still really, really great fun. So here are five reasons why you should read Robin Sloan's Sourdough. Number one, it's funny. Not laugh out loud, ha 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 funny, but a wry, dry, satirical look at uh, modern millennial society, really. It opens in a, in a robotics factory uh, where there's people working day and night, literally day and night, working themselves into the bone to replace human, the human workforce. It's kind of, kind of, that's the kind of uh, novel it is. It's kind of very ironic and uh, so very satirical, um, and it's very, very funny. So that is reason one. <laughs> Two, this book looks, looks at natural versus synthetic. Uh, the, the central theme is the, the sourdough starter that the central character Lewis is given. Uh, Lewis. The central character Lois is given. Um, and this thing is alive and roiling with bacteria. Um, and, but Lois's life is very, very synthetic. She uh, doesn't really know how to cook. Um, and she eats horrible uh, processed slurry or takeout. She ends up getting this from, from, from a takeout place, which she gets this amazing sourdough bread for. Anyway, they end up gifting her some, some, some of the sourdough starter. And if you don't know about sourdough bread, you find out how sourdough, uh, how sourdough bread is made uh, in this book. And, it, and I should say, it's set in San Francisco, uh, which I hadn't realised until reading this book. It's like, like a sort of, I didn't realise such a thing. If you go into all the supermarkets in the, here in the UK, they, they sell San Francisco sourdough bread. And I never even noticed that before. And it's because of its uh, use uh, with sourdough and miners used to cook it back in back in day. So it harkens back to, to, to the past, which I think that kind of a later reason, so I won't preempt myself. Um, so anyway, yeah, so, so Lois, she can't cook, but then she's given this starter, so she has to, otherwise it's going to die because it's alive. And so she starts making this bread, and suddenly um, she works for this robotics factory, but suddenly she finds great pleasure in doing, doing this sort of natural working, not working the earth exactly, but, you know, manual labour kind of, so it's that kind of continual uh, modern problem of, uh, of interacting with the world or interacting virtually. Uh, which you're going to do, and it kind of that's so that kind of again is what this book is about. So that is reason two. It's a very interesting discussion of that. Three. It's a deliciously metaphorical novel. The sourdough is deliciously metaphorical. The starter, this amazing starter that she's been given, causes all sorts of. Well, I won't spoil it. What happens? But I think the sourdough is kind of a metaphor for a big uh, Google-esque company, uh, which, which kind of. Um, well, I won't say too much, but it kind of it gets to keep keep uh, growing to survive. There is definitely some metaphor in there, which I really liked. If you've read Dave Eggers' The Circle, that metaphor is like clang, 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 hitting over here with a hammer. This is much more subtle. What's the point? I'm thinking, well, is that what he meant? Or am I just making that up myself? But I really like that element of the book. Uh, it's deliciously metaphorical. So number three is deliciously metaphorical, which takes me on to number four. If number two, the strand that I mentioned, was about the expedience versus experience, which I suppose it was, the expedience of getting slurry type, you know, synthetic food and takeout, and maybe with actually making it for yourself, the experience of making it, then another strand, strand four, is this kind of, is a dichotomy or, or looking at the balance between authenticity and fake authenticity. So uh, there's huge uh, endeavour 
in, in this world to make everything, you know, natural is good. Obviously, natural is good, but there's almost like a it's, things are fakely natural now, or, or just natural for the sake of it. If you look at the current trend, I was reading about raw water in Silicon Valley at the moment, it typifies how ridiculous this is. And th this book again examines that. What exactly is authentic? Where where do you draw the line? That synthetic slurry is made out of bacteria, or whatever that she eats. So it's kind of like soylent type stuff. It's not made out of bacteria. The process is about bacteria, but that's what sourdough is. Uh, and you know, she's is bread made with a robotic arm. Is that authentic? I don't know. Uh, so where is the barrier between authenticity and uh, fake authenticity? And there's definitely some poking of fun at the that kind of, kind of natural marketing and these uh, the, the guy who start who she gets a book that teaches her how to cook sourdough. He's like a, he's gone back to nature to kind of learn how to do it. Cook, building his oven out in the garden, that kind of thing. Uh, it's uh, a very tongue in cheek uh, look at that, which I really liked. So that was number four. Number five. Number five, the last and possibly the most important reason I like Robin Sloan sourdough is that it will make you want to make bread. And who, I mean, I used to make bread sometimes and I, I want to get back to it more and I, and I never do. I've never made sourdough before. I didn't realise about the whole process of sourdough. It'll make you want to make bread. So much so, I didn't make this one. I bought it in the supermarket just for this video. But I have made some sourdough starter, which I'm very excited about. It'll be ready in about three or four days. And I've never done it before, and it's really interesting. I think it appeals to the chemist, uh, scientist type person in me because it's fascinatingly scientific. I mean, there's quite a lot of interesting science in the book too, which I didn't mention. Um, but yes, it will make you want to make bread, eat bread. If you're on a low carb, extremely natural raw water diet at the moment, that's probably not a good thing about for you. But I don't care because I love sourdough, and I'm going to eat this, and I'm really going to enjoy it. So that is uh, number five. Reason five is its lovely bready nature. Uh, will really make you want to bake or understand baking and learn how to bake and I think that's a really good thing. I, I guess it was probably the author's intention to make you fall a little bit back in love with sourdough. So that is Robin Sloan's uh, Sourdough. It's published by Atlantic Books. It's $12.99 and it's pretty damn good. Uh, it, it's, um, it reads really nicely. It's very clever. Some people might say a little bit too clever, it's good, but it's very clever. Um, this kind of looking at uh, authenticity and the battle lines between thoughtful authenticity you know, is uh, a sourdough different to a processed food? Yes, it is. But it, it looks at it looks at the similarities and the differences and why perhaps we uh, focus a little bit too much uh, outwardly on on technology and uh, all that kind of thing, maybe. But then it also does explain why that's also a very very good thing too. So I think there's loads in this book. I really uh, enjoyed it. I thoroughly recommend it. If you have re if you have read that one or you can't get that one, then definitely read Mr. Penumbra because that's really good too. I, on balance, I would say read them both. Great books by Robin Sloan. Looking forward to seeing what he does next. Uh, I really enjoyed that. And the time here is now 10 to 1, which makes it about lunchtime. Which means I'm going to go and cut the top of my bread off. Okay, well, thank you for watching. Uh, do tell me what your favourite type of bread is. And I hope you enjoyed that. And I will see you sometime in the not too distant future with another five reasons to read video. Thank you for watching. Bye.